Hi guys, my name is uh, John Sood. I'm the uh, uh, CTO of Coda USA and I'm the Board of Advisors. Uh, essentially, uh, when I was exposed to this uh, technology called Coda, uh, my, my gut reaction is this is really a, a super cool uh, decentralized computing platform in the shape of a dog, which is, uh, which is entirely accurate. Um, my background's in uh, cybersecurity uh, for the last 25 years. Uh, and uh, specifically innovating in decentralized computing and, and how to secure decentralized computing from, uh, you know, uh, metadata attack vectors and uh, allowing to get the maximum of efficiency out of something like this while uh, preserving anonymity and uh, securing the environments. So uh, I was particularly interested in Coda. Coda uh, utilizes uh, Go IPFS with the HT. Um, you know, at the core and uh, is a, a pretty amazing robotic dog. So let's talk about it. So uh, way back in 2018, a uh, group of engineers and designers at Coda really wanted to build a decentralized computing AI platform. And uh, they had experience with, with different form factors. Um, and what really came to light was, if you could come up with something that was entirely useful you know, to, to the world at large, um, but it had the ability in its downtime to allow its owners to volunteer their, um, you know, the computing, um, you know, the computing processing power of something that would require quite a bit when used, uh, that'd be pretty, uh, that'd be pretty amazing. And uh, this is where Coda comes from. Uh, Coda will, well, and this is to be released, guys, this is an, in a a uh, very late stage prototype uh, will be uh, announced soon uh, for uh, productization. But essentially, what it will allow is its users to volunteer the computing time uh, on a Coda, which has a you know a multitude of uh, processors. Uh, obviously, runs uh, Go IPFS uh, with the HT, um, and, and will certainly take advantage of you know things that are coming out in six and seven. It's running five right now. Um, but it, it's really set up so that it can uh, allow a user to select what projects, for example, for decentralized computing, but also even in the default state, allow it to be a node. And that's that's the idea to, um, you know, uh, proliferate uh, this idea of decentralized computing um, without the hindrances and restraints of, you know, using, you know, kind of the traditional uh, traditional vendors, let's say. The idea here is there is going to be a Coda store. Um, the only reason Apple's on here is just to give uh, you know an analogy of, of what we're talking about. Um, then not only will there be decentralized apps that can be run on uh, your Coda or a Coda that you're uh, getting volunteer time on uh, to use, um, but it will also allow, uh, there's a full uh, SDK and API obviously available uh, for, uh, for access to Coda's uh, Coda's, uh, you know, vision systems, audible systems, um, but most importantly, it's uh, array of uh, of uh, computing uh, computing systems. A little bit of overview, and again, this is really just meant to be an intro. Um, I'm not going too deep into this. I'll go a little bit into the architecture for those that are interested, but uh, uh, essentially, it's very cute. Uh, one of the first things I had come to mind is I've seen just like I'm sure a lot of you on YouTube. You know, kind of what robotic dogs can look like, and there's certainly very capable uh, things out there. Um, this one has a head, which I thought was a great start. Um, one of the very cool things about this, um, you know, having this kind of decentralized computing platform for AI on a dog, is um, all the kind of dog things that are replicated, not because they're contrived by you know the creators and the manufacturing. It's because kind of how dogs work. So, for example, there's there's really there's 14 motors uh, on this dog, and there's a, a gimbaling system uh, for the head, and because of the way the microphones are set up in the, uh, I just thought this was particularly interesting, so I'm sharing it. The way the microphones are set up in the head, you know, like any real dog, you know, a dog that is trying to um, identify a sound source and, and receive the most, uh, you know, sound waves from whomever or whatever is making that sound, it will arc its head. So it kind of does a cant, you know, in order to, in order to, uh, to hear, you know, better. And that's exactly how a real dog works. 
And because of the placement of these sensors and how the motor, you know, they've gone to a lot of effort in putting the motors, um, kind of how a real dog works with the, you know, obviously the gate, but also how it uh, utilizes the sensors. It's got a very cool effect um, in the system. Um, for, for my part of this, I'm particularly interested in, obviously, uh, given my background in cybersecurity, um, in the, uh, you know, protection of not just private data and personal data, but also the data for when uh, CODIS time is being volunteered. And, and we're particularly sensitive to that. Just thought I'd mention that. So uh, this, this, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it does use a, uh, a fusion of uh, CPUs. Uh, there are several, as you might imagine. Uh, it has 14 motors. Uh, it has actually five 3D cameras. This, this is a little dated, sorry guys. Uh, this uses VSLAM. Um, some of your newer, uh, you know, Roomba vacuum cleaners, Roomba vacuum cleaners uses VSLAM uh, to navigate and to judge distance. Uh, so does Tesla. I believe Mercedes does as well. I'm not totally sure on that guy, so please don't quote me. Um, but it is amazing uh, technology. So uh, it uses VSLAM and obviously needs a visual recognition and tracking system and intelligent uh, hearing technology. And this is used for identification, not just because, you know, it needs to be able to receive commands or instructions audibly. Uh, one, of the first, uh, one of the first ideas for using CODAs in general are for visually impaired people. And so uh, if, if you have someone who would benefit from a, uh, you know, a living and breathing seeing eye dog, um, you know, CODA can be particularly advantageous uh, as a supplement and, and sometimes a replacement depending on what's needed. Um, but it, it needs to be able to act and understand its user just like a, a living and breathing animal would. And to that end, it needs to understand, for example, if its owner's under duress. So, you know, if you can imagine you're at a traffic intersection and uh, the light turns green, but the owner, you know, is having an issue and doesn't necessarily want to cross the street at that point, CODA can understand this as a duress event depending on the tone and act accordingly and provide additional information uh, in a, in, uh, perhaps on route or what have you. Navigation's built into the, into the system. But the idea here is not just to kind of use the traditional sensors in the traditional ways. It's really in the, the whole idea behind this as something that can help its owners when its owners need help. So this is just a little quick summary. Uh, you know, it's you know smarter, safer, faster. Uh, there have been other uh, things out on the market. This is really, at its core was built to be a decentralized computing platform. You know, CODAs are, are, are uh, you know, destined to be able to teach each other with their owner's permission uh, what they learn. You know, if one CODA learns how to navigate a particularly difficult type of stairs, it can share that information with other CODAs. So other CODAs, when they encounter similar geometry, can navigate them, uh, you know, obviously much better. And so that's just obviously a very small example, but that that really translates across what these devices are able to learn and share with each other. Uh, there is full control over what is shared and received in terms of instruction. Um, but the idea here is it's going to not just be a platform for decentralized computing and uh, and you and uh, AI. It's uh, it's going to use it itself in order to uh, in order to learn and learn uh, quickly. A little bit about the company. It's headquartered in Mountain View, California. Uh, it is a robotics innovation company. And uh, the whole idea is we would like to harness, uh, you know, decentralized computing. A little bit on timeline. A lot of people ask it whenever we talk about this. We haven't really launched yet. So uh, for the few that have seen uh, what you're seeing today, a uh, little bit of background, uh, beginning in 2018. Uh, first uh, lab-based prototype was in January. Um, headquartered in Silicon Valley, opened up in February here uh, in, Sil in uh, Silicon Valley. I, I personally am in Maryland, though. Uh, uh, July is the uh, second generation of the prototype. Uh, Pre-orders start uh, September 2020. There's uh, the fourth generation prototype uh, will be in October. Then the fifth uh, being launched at, and hopefully uh, we're all going to be available to to see it um, in person at uh, in January at uh, Computer Electronics Show. 
the delivery NG.